back. Fuck, fuck, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I will actually start just, uh, I will introduce myself. I am Matt Plotecker. I am the senior uh, project manager at Frogwood Games, and I am joined by... I'll go. Uh, I'm Grace Carpenter. I'm the art director slash wherever they need me person. And I am the CEO, Garrett Millian. And yeah, I do a lot of, a uh, lot. Thanks. We are naturals at this. Um, so yeah. We're, we're, we're I mean, the just, first one's going to be bumpy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's fine. We are going to go ahead and actually, so we're just going to go over what we've been working on. We're in the middle of a sprint. And we're going to just talk about where we're at, things that we've done, things that have been added to the game, um, maybe a little bit of speculation on things that uh, we're looking forward to at the end of the sprint and maybe even to next sprint. But for right now, it's more about just uh, taking stock of what we've actually got um, so far within the game. Um, and actually, I'll encourage both of you, if you wanted to, during our discussions, mention anything about how it used to be. So this is the first one. People will, people can have a frame of reference in terms of what it used to look like versus what it looked like now or why certain changes were made. Let's go ahead and kick it off basically with just starting with Grace and you can kind of tell us what you've been up to uh, within the uh, context of the sprint. Sure, um, I have been mostly focusing on two things, uh, getting the website up and running, our first uh, go-to website for email inquiries. Um, I've been working with Will and Cam who has been rocking it, uh, making a website from scratch, just like blowing me away every time. Uh, and we've been gathering uh, screenshots and making sure everything looks spiffy for our like initial website pitch. Uh, other than that, I've been rendering uh, our wonderful concept artist Tim's uh, pilot sketches to more be in line with like the digital um, C aspect of the game. So I've been rendering those pilots out that hopefully we can um, stick into the UI or just show off would be very cool. I'm very excited for that. And um, in UI things, just kind of like wherever I'm pinged, I'm there. I'm making icons, I'm making logos. I'm just like, I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, in fact, I think that one of the things that I did work on recently was a, um, a trailer that we hope to have finished soon. And yes, we did see that. On the, um, those licenses, the pilot licenses or whatever we want to do with it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with that <laughs> as opposed to yeah, the Photoshop the mashups. Hey, I mean, like I said, like I tell everybody, even if sketches, like stick figures, whatever, if you can hand that to an artist, we'll, we'll love you forever. Like, it's so helpful. <laughs> Looking forward to that, because like, given like the uh, the board game roots, you know, with uh, with like the card design, like I already know, like it's, it's basically a card design, right? And so uh, I'm, I'm sure I, I have confidence you'll rock that. Um, and that's actually uh, something I like to ask too, really quick for you, Grace, and this is also the first time we've had a chance to talk more in depth, is... Um, would you mind saying a couple things about like the art direction basically that we're going with within within Cosmic Shore? Um, and, like how would you describe it? How would you be like kind of like think about it in terms of your, as you're putting, you know, the aesthetics put together? Yeah, uh, so we initially started with something very retro. Um, we were always really attracted to like uh, old arcade games, kind of like Tron especially. Uh, and we started with this vaporwave aesthetic like a long time ago with Teal Glider, which you can play, it's out there. You'll very much see it, it's like Tron's right there. Uh, we kind of moved on to this like, well, if C, if like the space is a liquid, what would that look like? And the idea being that like you have these digital space creatures, so it kind of like put the wave in vaporwave. Uh, we try and do stuff that's a little more subtle. Um, but like also very odd. So I looked at a lot of like the minimalist geometric patterns and um, mixing that with like the very natural ocean and like shapes like that. And together we kind of mush those together in a way that's like you have your, your vibrant colors, but there's still like a very um, current kind of feel to it, especially with like, you'll see with the skybox. Um, I pulled from Subnautica was a big was a big uh, inspiration just because they have like an insane amount of actual ecosystem going on in that game and it's it's really interesting how they can actually like pull from that stuff. I looked at a lot of cell shaded stuff because of kind of our fidelity level. Um, I was looking at Deep Rock Galactic also has a lot of those like really good sci-fi like space things. Um, and there was a couple there was like an anime 
Let me. I will send you the mood boards. I have like a ton of mood boards. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Uh, uh, there was actually, honestly, the Aquaman movie. Like, I know how much people are like, "Oh god, the Aquaman movie," but the ship designs, <laughs> like actual, like Atlantis, it's really cool. But yeah, I can send you the mood boards to kind of give you a better idea of like what we were pulling from. I asked a lot of people on the design team, and otherwise, really, to send me a lot of like different various things, and then we kind of like put them all together. That was a that was a great like journey through you know how we started where it was like first paper wave and then we wanted whimsical and we didn't really know how yeah. to express that yet but we started to get like more organic whimsical shapes as we get more as we got more envio inspired and made the the hyper sea feel more like a, an ocean and then i thought i think when we when it took a nice shift was when we um, we found like the, the third piece of the puzzle was the the subcellular inspiration where we started to really get you know like people kept looking at the the nucleus and saying it looked like DNA and it looked like these organelles and we're like, all right, let's lean into that. And so mm-hmm. now we, refer, we started referring to the biomes now as cells. Um, between the three, it's like, so it's it's cosmic, it's oceanic, and it's subcellular. Actually, I've been right given my coffee. Thank you, lovely wow. assistant. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you, lovely assistant. Oh, I got a bow. Uh, <laughs> so... So looking through the the artboard actually reminded me of a lot of stuff that we were looking at because we knew from the get-go that we wanted to do something that was like mobile friendly. So we knew we weren't going to do something that was hyper realistic, but we still wanted like an obvious, you know, to set us apart. Um, and looking through this, it looks like we, like I said, took a lot of Aquaman. We have a lot of like, I think, I believe we started uh, looking at anthropomorphic mechs. Um, I'm seeing a lot of really interesting concept art that I think uh, one of our designers, Maya, pulled. But I see a lot of Zoids on here, which I makes me happy. <laughs> Love Zoids. Uh, and there's uh, some Ghibli inspiration because they're very good at like mixing the organic and the mechanical, especially in like Castle in the Sky. Those robots are like when they spread out their wings, it's like really weird. <laughs> um, but something I forgot about was looking at circuitry. And the I think this drove, oddly enough, a lot of our like engineering philosophy with the flora and the fauna, which is like trying to figure out how I can blend the shapes of like that evoke circuitry with stuff that is also very similar in cell structure, like Garrett was saying before, like um, repeating structures and fungi. And we've talked extensively about this uh, and just trying to like make that connection between like or like where the line is between organic, but like referencing mechanical. And I think that's where the hyper sea is really going to like kick off as an aesthetic because we're trying to merge both. And I think a lot of the patterns are very similar in a way that I was very, it's, it's very interesting to me because I can find something like circuitry and then be like, oh, like this matches a lot of the like fungal cell structure. And we can kind of like build that together. Like what happens when you merge organic and like digital industrial kind of things. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, that was uh, the notes that I had. Hey, right now. Um, yeah, I, 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 a little bit. I can just talk forever. <laughs> well, I, we'll have no trouble. Talking. <laughs> well, I was gonna say. Well, I'm glad that you said that, Garrett, because now I was gonna ask you in terms of like, where do, we've talked a lot about the stuff that we've been working on on this particular spr- sprint. But where you, where would you want to start? Where do you think is like the the top thing to like to lead with on this? Um. Yeah, we, well, we can definitely dive into like, and we'll you know circle through some of the the recent development stuff the of the of the weeks, and so that's definitely uh, a fall a nice fallback. Riffing on like the where we were, where we were at, just getting kind of like a, a larger wealth to to trim down if you want is um, the uh, the the aesthetic like that that point about like retro styling. There's a nice I think there's a really nice line to draw there where it says um it's not like pixel art for example right so no it's not art, voxel exactly like so pixel art's an example of where you you make kind of an arbitrary constraint that's largely like unnecessary for like nostalgic reasons and so we're never really doing that like we're not actually like trying to evoke nostalgia per se it's really and, and so if you look at like first generation league of legends versus now it's gone through many revisions so as the fidelity uh, is enabled to increase because mobile, you know, the devices and the hardware that we want to be on can handle can handle more entities and things you know, like that. Then we can start reconsidering things that we're not doing now, like lighting. Like we don't do lighting because 
it's just really expensive and so we're looking for like bang for the buck um, we don't do textures because they're really expensive so we're looking at other ways that we can paint the faces of things so everything that we don't do is really a compromise because it would get you know it would give us more to work with we did but it's just such a computationally expensive thing that we say you know what we can we want to use our, our bits <laughs> elsewhere um, <laughs> So, um, you know, we want destructible environments, and we figured out a way to do that through the shader. So they, we're rotating things on perfect principal axes, but they're, uh, but it's all done in a very computationally light way. Um, and again, but it looks really great, you know, as they're, as they're flying away, it's really satisfying to blow things up. So that's an example of something like really bang for the buck. And with just a simple Fresnel shader, you can give your eye everything that it wants from lighting, which is the ability to see the three, you know, the, the shading and the third dimensionality of something and with the, of the normal with respect to the camera. You can do that so much cheater, cheaper than, uh, than doing full lighting. Right. So I think that these, those are examples of like, we're always on the lookout for these tricks that give really high bang for the buck and then um, this, that we can run on the most devices possible. So um, yeah, so how that, and then how the, the style like ties into the lore. So part of the one of the things we're saying is, you know, so the hyper sea is where you travel 100 light years in five minutes. So you're traveling massively, you know, greatly faster than the speed of light, which means the seeing doesn't really make sense. Right? <laughs> like, what do you, when you see, you're looking at, you're seeing light. So obviously you're not seeing light if you're traveling at faster than the speed of light. Uh, there's a subtlety that maybe not every gamer is going to think about immediately. But we try to have like this background of rigor that we're not putting in your face, but we're respecting internally, and then we're only exposing as it's fun and relevant to the user. But we want to give something where it's in, it has this internal consistency, it has this rigor, so you can have these deep lore fans kind of making and discovering these little things that we're burying, and, and it, it does all make sense. And it, so it doesn't feel like Wizard of Oz, where there's just like... Things Song and dance. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, gameplay trumps all, so... You know, at the end of the day, nothing beats, you know, fun is always the priority and we're always on the lookout for fun, chasing fun. And if we find it, we seize it and exaggerate you know, extent, accentuate it as much as we can. So certainly when you find those things that are really fun or not just fun, but like facilitating fun. So I'll give you an example. Um, the whole game is about, you know, ostensibly you're traveling through the, the big mega map world map of our game is, is our galaxy. As, so, the, you know, a lot of missions involve going from point A to point B, uh, you know, making a long stretch through through hyperspace, this condensed reality. And if that's this, you know, if it's per the purpose of going into this alternate reality where space is compressed into liquid is to be able to travel vast distances, and then your friend wants to play on the other side of the galaxy, and you go, oh yeah, I'll just teleport over there and play a game with you. That's a little weird, right? Because you're like, wait, if I can just teleport across the galaxy, <laughs> what do we need this hyper C for, right? Uh, but at the same time, we're really trying to make a game that's fun and convenient and, and about connecting yeah. people. If your friend wants to play and you're on the other side of the galaxy, then yeah, you get to teleport to their caddis. Uh, a couple other things I just wanted to ask uh, quickly is one of them is um, for the, the next couple of weeks, like what are each of you looking uh, forward to working on next in terms of, you know, a particular task or project or aspect, you know, what is, um, what's top on top of mind right now for that for that uh well i would love to finish the um pilot portraits as well as get those cards figured out i love a good like diegetic thing uh but i'm also excited to get back into specifically fx uh gary and i are going to work on some jets for like some polish on the ships and i haven't dove, dove into unity in a minute and i'm pretty excited to get back into it <laughs> nice one yeah jets are going to be fun that'll be uh <clears throat> Grace and I approach things very orthogonally, but we've collaborated on multiple things together, and I, I, I love all of the results. So it's, it's fun. She can bring the aesthetic eye, and I can pull off a few math, math tricks, and the result is something that I've, I've been proud of every time. Um, so Jets will be fun, and then my other priorities are I'm making, I'm working on a mass crystal right now. Um, so we have four elements in the game, mass, charge, space, and time. And they each have their own crystal power-ups that upgrade your ship in that uh, in that dimension. Um, so we have uh, um, the I, sp I finished recently the space crystals. So those are those are looking fun. The the surface spatially rearranges. So mm -hmm. I'll have to show you that. It's um, you got a it has like 
there's triangles and pentagons that both get like intersected and, and rotated in sequence that um, that looks it's, it's a pretty aesthetically pleasing result and I'm really happy with how the space crystal turned out so that was that was recently which is nice and then I'm trying to move on to the mass crystal it's been pretty tricky the there's a render queue issue I was trying to make the the shells on the outside come on the inside and then fade out as they all emanate with, from each other the, the intent being to make like a a visual analog of a shepherd tone. Um, the tricky part is that the um, the one that's fading out, as I reset it to the center, it's uh, it doesn't know its uh, its depth cue. So it's like drawing it as if it's still on the outside, even though it's on the inside. So it's drawing over everything while being on the inside, which looked wrong. So uh, <laughs> I can show it to you. Uh, so I'm now I think when we're fixing that, so each shell is going to actually move through its own little period. So I'll just have to create a script that feeds the inputs into uh, into the shader so that each little shell just moves through just its own layer and then resets to its own original position. Mm -hmm. So it's doing just the minimal loop, and then that will keep the same cue. Um, so the center one will stay in the center, and it'll, it should loop that. So it's instead of them all looping in a carousel through the whole thing, they'll just loop through the parts that they need to. Nice. I think that should fix it. So we'll see. That's what I'm going to try next, and then uh, I'm time boxing that. If I don't, I will, I'll just put that down. If it, if it doesn't work or we don't like it, then we'll table the mass crystal for now, and I'll be focused on getting the worm. So we want to get a space worm that we can put into our uh, into our trailer and have a you know um, characteristic boss fight. Yeah, um, I would say that. Uh... The, uh, for myself, I'm just looking forward to so I'm getting this video edited together. I have no idea what it looks like, but that's going to be exciting. Um, and then I'm actually really looking forward to the trailer coming together, too. I think that we put together a nice, a really nice um, rough draft, if uh, nothing else, and working with Will uh, and Emmanuel to get um, the, the actual gameplay footage for that uh, put together. That's going to be a lot of fun. I think that's going to give this group. I'm really hoping that gives us a chance to really show off the the art and design that we were talking about earlier um, in the game because that's going to be that's a big draw from my, from my perspective. Um, nice. All right, cool. I think I'm going to call it on that. That was a pretty good uh, first first chat. Um, let me go ahead and uh, thank everybody for watching. And we'll yeah, thanks for hanging out. <laughs>